Okay. You want to do the intro? <laughs> <laughs> Try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, people, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, a special welcome to you. I ask that you check out the rest of our videos, and if you like what you see, give them a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. <laughs> up more than anything. I'm asking that you subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Not bad. Not no, bad. No. Not bad. <laughs> anyway, people. So today my wife is here with me just because she can. <laughs> Quarantine time, nothing else to do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, so um she wanted to sit in on the video. I yeah. did ask her if you got something to contribute. She says, mm, we will no, see. No, no. You know, so <laughs> A disclaimer, she's actually just sitting in, sitting in just yeah. because she's my wife and she can sit in on the and video. And I've got the merch. And, and we're promoting <laughs> our merch as usual. You know, so today's video is about black Americans <laughs> versus Jamaicans, yeah. you know. Recently I did a video about black Jamaicans versus black Jamaicans. Well, you guys can check out that video to see what exactly that I discuss. The reason why I'm going to discuss black American versus Jamaican today is because recently I was having a conversation with one of my subscribers, Happy67, Happy67, big up yourself, and Happy67 live in the southwest of the United States of America. Every now and then we would have a little chit chat about whatever, and the recent conversation was about black Americans versus Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. So in our thread of conversation, I did say to that person that I will do a video covering my experience of being black in America as a Jamaican yeah. versus the black Americans in the United States of America. So a disclaimer that I want to make is one, everybody's experience in the United States of America I expect it to be not completely different, yeah. but different. So this is my experience that I'm going to tell and I'm going to explain to you from my point of view, the difference that I see between black Americans and Jamaicans. Right. So I went to the United States of America in the mid 1980s. So if you've just gone to America in the 90s or in the 2000s, I expect your experience to be different you know so i can only tell you about what i saw what i experienced like all jamaican children that was born in jamaica in the 70s 60s and maybe in the 80s the big dream was to go to the united states of america you know that was like heaven and hurt so while people were going to school, going to college, going to uni, trying to get, become lawyers, doctors, Indian chief. Some of us just wanted to get to the United States of America exactly. because we were under the impression that all our problems, our struggles will be solved In once America. you get to the United <laughs> States of America. So when I got to the United States of America, eventually, you know, I must be honest and says my first week or two in the United States of America, I was truly disappointed because <laughs> there were no um, YouTube, so there were no foresight of the United States of mm -hmm. America. All I had was pretty much um, what people told me about the United States of America. And yeah. um, I didn't get any real bad news about the US, or maybe I did, but because mm -hmm. your- The blind side is. Exactly, yeah. or what you would say, seeing it through- um, Rose colored glasses. <laughs> or maybe I just shunned all the bad that I heard about the United States of America. <laughs> but when I got to the United States of America, I got to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it was not what I expected it to be. I expected it to be clear clean streets, I expected mm. to be nice and social people, yeah. and it was pretty much the opposite of that. It was mm. dirty streets, it was abandoned buildings, and it was like, <laughs> you know, I want to keep it pleasant on my yeah. channel, but it no was, it, it was not what it cracked up to be, you know, so, but at the same time, 
that's not the whole United States of America because um, I did have a girlfriend that lived in what I perceived mm. as how the United States of America is. She, she lived in Hackettstown, New Jersey. I don't know what Hackettstown, New Jersey is like today, <laughs> but back then that's how I Imagine the United States of America to be yeah. white picket fans, um, paper a bit like um, Home Alone. Yes, you know, you know? The from Home Alone. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so big up yourself, D. If you're watching it, you know who I'm talking about. Ackettstown, New Jersey. I did have the opportunity to visit there a few times, and mm -hmm. I thought, okay, it's not all of America yeah. that looked like Philadelphia. You know. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Black Americans versus Jamaicans. When I went to the United States of America, the first thing I did notice about black Americans versus us is that we were culturally different. Mm -hmm. um, our views, our morals were way off par. Right. You understand? We were nothing alike. The socialization of black Americans and Jamaicans back then was like this. Black American females we're more likely to associate with Jamaicans right. than say black American men mm. or Jamaican females would rarely associate with black American men okay. while a black American female would in a majority associate with us. Mm. Um, the men and men relationship then it wasn't a common sight, you know. Mm -hmm. So most Jamaicans would say they have maybe one black American male friend, and that's pretty much about it. Okay. And most black American men would say, I have no mm -hmm. Jamaican friends. So I'm trying to think where should I start in cultural differences. Um, okay, whereas uh, you had something in school, you had a situation in school where, they, where your cultural differences were. Um, you told me a story about when, when he went to school, um, he would say certain numbers Oh, well, 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 you know, obviously we have accents different. Yeah, so gradually get into it. Yeah, gradually, gradually yeah. becoming um, Americanized. Yeah. So when I first went to the United States of America, obviously my accent was strong, <laughs> raw Jamaican. <laughs> and they used to have fun teasing me because I could not pronounce the word three. You know, I use anything with three. I used to say number three, 23, 33. And for them, that was um, funny. Yeah. But um, that's just accents. Well, um, when I'm saying culture, I'm talking about behavior. Let's keep mm -hmm. it at school then, for example. Mm -hmm. I remember there was this girl in my class in school and she used to wear a lot of jewelry. Okay, yeah. And I could tell when her and her boyfriend had a problem. Mm. You know, because her she, American boyfriend. Her American boyfriend. Because <laughs> then she would show up mm. with no jewelry. You know, and I know that okay, they're having a problem. So yeah. um I learned in America of the word that they call Indian giver. That's someone that gives you something mm. when you and them are on good terms and then when you and them are not on good terms they yeah. want it back, you know, and that was and probably still is common in the United States of America mm. among black Americans. Mm. I say black Americans because that was who I was mostly mm. exposed to. Mm. Let's start at home, you know. At home I live with my mom and my siblings mm. and um, it didn't matter to my mother who was Jamaican whether I was 17 or whether I was 18. Um, I'm a child, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I could live in my mother's house probably until I'm like 40, yeah. 50, yeah. you know, and I could actually live in my mother's house and be selfish, meaning I didn't have to give my mother a dime, no, you know. No. While, when it came to black American family, yeah. uh, family relationship was a bit different, you know. Right. It was like the minute you turn 18, you have to pay rent. And, you know, or get out. Or get out. And that was strange to me as a yeah. Jamaican, you know. I mean, my mom never tried it, but... Let's say, you know, just in a rhetorical way that my mom would have said, you guys need to pay rent. I'm sure me and my brothers would just laugh at my mom. Exactly. You know, like, are you joking or what? <laughs> you know? Love you, mom, if you're watching. 
but I'm keeping it real. When it comes to Jamaican um, mom and children, the relationship is different. In the United States of America, you'll find out that mothers will take children to court, children will take their parents to court, and when it came to the Jamaican setting, the family setting, that's just a no-no. That just yeah. never happened. Right. However, let me just create a little tiny room to say there are some Jamaicans who went to the United States of America and adapt the culture mm -hmm. and try to adapt the behavior. Mm -hmm. But still speaking on the majority, it just never fly. You right. understand? Yeah. Um, the second thing I could say culturally with Jamaicans versus the United States blacks were when it comes to religion. Mm. Jamaican Christians versus the U.S. Christian, in my opinion, <laughs> totally were different. totally different. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jamaicans fear God yeah. when it comes to Christianity. Mm -hmm. They act. The belief is so transparent so strong, yes. and and strong versus, say, a United States of America black that I've been exposed mm -hmm. to, who praise God and go to church, but in their behavior in their cultural action mm. you could see where material things truly matters you could see where m money yeah. matters and you, you could know. take the also use that for the the pastors or the, oh, the priests so, it, you, you know, know I mean, you guys if you guys <laughs> see on youtube yeah. you will see um reverence in the united states of america black yeah. pastors they're truly slick and yeah. expensive cars and expensive clothes and the fancy hairstyle um it's <laughs> it's different yeah. i'm not saying jamaicans are better mm -hmm. i'm not saying the u.s blacks are better i'm just pointing out the differences yeah. Yeah. the next thing that i had to point out was is relationship mm -hmm. man and woman relationship when it comes to black American and black, black and black American yeah. relationship, totally different from black and black Jamaican relationship. Mm -hmm. The American relationship is more a business partnership right. than it is a relationship. Let's say we both are working. Um, it's more like you pay the rent yeah. and I pay the bills mm -hmm. and None of us can falter because yeah. if one of us lose our job or falter, the next one doesn't only take up the slack and go on with life. It's like, I owe you. Yeah. You know, remember <laughs> that time when you were yeah. not working yeah, yeah. and I paid for this and I paid for that. Now that you got a job, you got to repay me. Exactly. So that's kind of different because when it comes to Jamaican black and black relationship, it's more like, it's our money. Our money, yeah. Um, we are lovers. We are yeah. friends. We are partners in life, and we're just gonna try to go through this together. Exactly. So it's our bills. We turn the lights on. We both drink the water. There's no split down the middle. No. You know, we just kind of take care of our household, exactly. take care of each other, and. It is a custom that Jamaican men take care of their woman. And any man that doesn't take care of their woman, yeah, we do look down on them a little like, yo, dude, you're in a position to take care of your woman. You exactly. should take care of her. Her nails should be done. Her hair should be done. She yeah. should have her money in her pocket, etc., etc. But that, at the same time, doesn't mean she owe me anything financially. So... That's how I was brought up as a Jamaican. Yeah, and, and I've seen that in my family. I mean, my mom and dad are Jamaican born and every anniversary, every birthday, my dad will come home with a necklace or earrings for my mom. And I really like that, you know. And it's not a, it's and not a, it's not a retractable no, gift. No, no, my mom didn't have to buy my dad anything. Nope. In fact, my dad always says, you know, Christmas, don't get me anything. But mum would always get him a little something, you know. Right. But every, without fault and without fail, my dad will bring a, a necklace, a ring. So I, I see that relationship and I hope that the man that I marry one day um, would do that. And right. luckily, you know, right. yes, right. not my Jamaican man. <laughs> And because of that, in the United States of America, you'll find that most black American women will draw towards the Jamaican men yeah. over their own. I hate saying over their own because we're all black. 
mm. you know, and we were just born in different countries, mm -hmm. but we're all black, you know, and the culture makes such a big difference. But the black American woman will, what you would say, navigate herself towards mm. the Jamaican man more because of that queen-like treatment, right. you know, where the man kind of like put his woman up in a pedestal and mm -hmm. if they should have any dispute or any breakup it's not privilege it's not give me back my ring or give me back my shoes or give yeah. me back my car or it's not what the Jamaican man the Jamaican man what's our negative <laughs> back then our negative was our aggression we were more aggressive coming from Jamaica, which is a, mm -hmm. a volatile society. We were more from the dark, so we weren't coming from a society where laws were so strong, old on us. Mm -hmm. So, not taking any credit away from the Jamaican men, but the Jamaican mm -hmm. men were more quicker to be physically assaulting mm -hmm. to the women. It, yeah, yeah, while mm -hmm. the United States black men would be thinking about the law of the land. You <laughs> yeah. know, like, well, she could, get me arrested. she could send me to prison and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that was the drawback when it came to Jamaican men mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. the United States right. men. Culturally, Jamaicans on a whole, we live with a certain moral code. Yes. For example, living in Jamaica, if I like a girl and mm -hmm. I want to date her, mm -hmm. I would have to court her for weeks and weeks, you know, and I would have to like prove myself to her, yeah. right? While in the United States of America, when I was there, it was like first date. First date. We <laughs> met today and we were intimate in a few hours. And the next thing that was kind of weird and strange to me in the United States of America is mm -hmm. a woman who is attracted to you. She would confront you right she she has no shame in her game mm -hmm. she would just step up to you and she would chat you up like yeah. how a man would chat right. up a woman and that was a bit culturally different yeah, to me. For me i mean okay i'm not Ameri i wasn't born in america I'm jamaican parents i was born in britain but um i could say the same thing um i would never go up to a man uh, that I liked and ask him out or say that I like you or anything like that. I'd probably wait forever for the right, you know, <laughs> to come uh, up what, to me. What a Jamaican woman would do, yeah. she would probably have one of her friends, male or female, okay. get the message to you yeah, yeah. that so and so like you, mm. but she wouldn't come up no. herself. Keeping it in line with the no. female's moral code, Jamaican women tend to find shame if they've been intimately involved with too many men mm -hmm. while in the united states of america it was just more like <laughs> and yeah. they, they would pretty much say so the men do it and we can do so, <laughs> so, so that was strange the next thing i have to say is when we went when i went to the united states of america um there was a preconception of jamaicans mm. we were expected to be violent we were expected yeah. to be ignorant we were expected to be um coming out of the caveman era mm -hmm. um a lot of people were treating us as if We've never lived in a house before. <laughs> um, we've never um, mm. slept in a bed before. Um, of, of course, it was the 80s. It's not like we had luxury in Jamaica, but it was still a civil society. But the black Americans view us like we couldn't speak proper English mm. because we had an accent or we speak patois with our, with our, um, our own people. Yeah. You know, so we were looked down on somewhat mm. other than being looking down on somewhat they only knew us for negative things exactly. they, they knew us I'm, I'm from Philadelphia so they knew us for the shower posse mm. and all the negativity that the shower posse did where drug dealing yeah. and killing were concerned mm. they knew us for Bob Marley but that was not a positive thing because a lot of people saw Bob Marley as a lyrical gangster yeah. who wanted to change the mindset 
of people in their thinking. Mm -hmm. They also knew as for Marcus Garvey, and Marcus Garvey was probably one of the first Jamaicans to be deported from the US, yeah. meaning they didn't see Marcus Garvey as a positive thing. The United States of America saw Marcus Garvey as a rebel mm -hmm. who came there and wanted to change the mindset of people. I was down south once, South Carolina to be exact, and I realized how different in geographics black Americans were, mm -hmm. you know, because I was speaking with an older man who could have been my dad at the time, and he didn't know where Jamaica was, you know, he thought Jamaica was in Africa. Oh and I God. says, no, Jamaica is actually not so far from where we are at the moment, <laughs> about a three and a half hour flight, mm. and you would be in Jamaica. So, Southern black Americans were not clued up on Jamaicans or Caribbean right. people as a whole. But Northern, up north, they were more clued up, like mm. Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York. The positive spin on Jamaicans came when a lot of United States most reverend hip-hop artists yeah. were connected to Jamaicans, are Jamaicans. Oh, we're right. talking about the likes of... Biggie Smalls, I mean, he put the whole Jamaican into his rap. In New York City, there were people like Special Head, there mm. were Buster Rhymes, yeah. there was that guy from that Texas group, the one that died not so long ago, the real, oh, yeah, mm. of Ghetto yeah. Boys. Yeah. So, yeah. Jamaicans started getting some respect yeah, in late, a positive light. Late 80s, 90s, and even today, you still hear it in uh, a little bit of a, a few songs. I mean, Tiger, I mean, he's uh, mother or father or somebody's half Jamaican or something right, like right. that. Right, right, Alicia Keys, yeah, Kerry too. Washington. Yeah. So I guess over the years people start realizing that Jamaicans were just people like yeah. like everybody else. There is, yeah. um, we have bad bunches and we yeah. have good bunches and we have ambitious bunches yeah. and we've got negative bunches. Yeah. However, in the 90s, I would say a lot of goody goody two shoes Jamaicans who went to the United States of America quickly dropped their goody goody two shoes attitude yeah. when they realized that being Jamaican was like a brand. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Jamaican, it was cool yeah. to be Jamaican. Yeah. Um, I have to put it out there and says some of the things that made us cool was weed. <laughs> marijuana you know so you had Jamaicans that never smoked in their life when they were in Jamaica yeah. and they went to America and they figured oh Jamaican it's a big thing to be Jamaican yeah. here you know so let me puff puff to represent you know <laughs> some of them even locks up their hair you yeah, know yeah. and some of us indulge in negative activity not because we were necessarily bad people but mm -hmm. it was a part of being the brand exactly when i went to school in america everybody thought that if i'm not a part of a posse somebody in my family member yeah. had to be a part of a posse because mm -hmm. jamaicans only deal in <laughs> posses <laughs> That's pretty much all that I could say about yeah. um, the Jamaican versus Black American. There were never any unity between us. No. We were never one. There were always a divide between Black Americans mm -hmm. and Jamaicans. Even if you're a Black Jamaican man who is with a Black American woman, yeah. I would never say our whole family embraces you mm -hmm. as equal. Mm -hmm. They still see you like you're from backland country right. and you're, you, there's something negative about you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where, where you need... Um, yeah, like Jamaica is a third world country. It's a third world America country. It's is first world country. You and know, your mindset is forever third world yeah. and doesn't matter how long you live in the United States of America as a Jamaican, mm -hmm. Um, you're still seen by black Americans yeah. as, you know, you're foreign, so you don't know everything, you know. Um, when I was introduced to him, um, remember, when I was introduced to you, uh, the friend that introduced me to him says that he's American. So right. I don't think she fully knew, knew, knew me. Knew she didn't fully, right. She thought I was American. Right, but we worked together, so I was like, oh, 
I'm not so sure. You know? so, um, uh, well, okay, it's kind of cool, maybe. You know, American in England. So uh, yeah, she okay. she thought that I was American because yeah. of how I spoke. Yeah, um, he spoke. So you know, when when she said he's American, I thought mm, I'm not so sure. So it took me a few uh, weeks to contact uh, me. Con <laughs> Cool. And then when he got on the phone, um, I thought, oh, he doesn't sound American. He right, sounds right. Jamaican. Right, right. So I, I didn't say anything to him at the time, but on our first date, he kind of like says, he kind of like says, oh, um, no, I'm Jamaican. Right, right. I've lived in America. Yeah. And I would speak to my mom. I'll talk to my mom if I was going on a date. Yeah. I would say to my mom, I'm going on a date. Mom would say, where's he from? And I'd say, oh, he's from America. So mom was like, oh, okay, okay. And yeah. then when I came home and I said, oh, it's actually Jamaican, he's born in Jamaica, he's born here, born... Mum was so happy, <laughs> you know, because um, yeah, yeah. in England that's, that, that's scarce. Right, you know, right. Um, every black person, not every black person, but, but most... the majority are from Jamaican background right. or born in England and um, if they're not Jamaican, they're African, so I uh, don't want to get into that, African and Jamaican, but right. you know. that's a different blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um... Yeah, my mum was happy, my dad was happy too. Yeah, my dad yeah. was happy. And we were even happier when we found out that my dad and your parents were from the same, same. parish. Yeah. You know, so that, <laughs> that, that was actually a good thing. Exactly. So, who knows, we may have to do a video on Jamaicans and Black British. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. there's also some cultural differences oh, there, a lot of but differences. not as much as black americans and jamaicans no, you no, know no. so that that is that is one yeah. thing <laughs> so that's pretty much it people um if you've had any interesting experiences by yeah. being jamaican with mm. black american please share because yeah. i can only share my um experience from the mid 80s to say the year 2000 mm. um after that i've not been in the united states of america i have no on the ground experience you yeah. know uh -huh. i've traveled the world and before closing let me just say living in the united states of america is like living anywhere else and while i was there i pick up some cultural things mm. or yeah. some things from the united states Definitely. that i thought would be beneficiary to my life yeah. when i moved to the uk i did the same thing there were some things in the uk that i thought mm. not for me and mm -hmm. then some things i thought is for me yeah. and then i moved to switzerland it was the same, same thing. thing and as i travel around the world i do the same mm -hmm. one of the things that i resent from people is that when I declare that I'm Jamaican, mm. they say I don't sound Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> I resent yeah. that because I take that like you expect all Jamaicans to sound ignorant in speaking mm -hmm. a language that you don't understand. I can chat Patwa, but mm. I think how ignorant would it be of me to chat Patwa to a white person or an English speaking person mm -hmm. or a German speaking person who don't understand what I'm saying. Exactly. It would just be <laughs> stupid. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, no. To each his own, but I don't think I should go around the world trying to sound as Jamaican as I can. No. I, I'm me and I represent <laughs> one um, sector of Jamaica. Exactly. Our language in Jamaica is English mm -hmm. and English is what we speak. Yeah. My accents, I couldn't even put a finger on my accent today because I've developed accents from almost <laughs> all over the world. Yeah. Everywhere I've gone. <laughs> However, I was in, was it Rome or Paris we were? And yeah. there was one guy that says, you're Jamaican. Yeah. And I was like, I gave him a handshake and I was like, how do you figure that? And he says, I watch a lot of West Indian cricket. <laughs> He named um, one of Jamaica's cricketers and yeah. he said, you sound like him. He said, you're Jamaican. I wouldn't put you... He, he didn't even say Caribbean. He didn't even make a mistake. No. He just kind Jamaican. of Jamaican. So funny though, that's um, a story that I have as well. I was at work and a customer says, oh, where are you from? And I says, oh, I'm British. And they says, no, 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 no. You're not British. Right. And where I are you says, from? Well, where are you from? And I says, well, my parents are Jamaican. And then he says, why, well, why? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> but that's it, you know, you know. Most countries that um, people visit or have been exposed to, if we don't yeah. know anything, we know the greetings. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Little Switzerland, I yeah. never thought I'd, I'd hear we that. We know one. the greetings. <laughs>
and in Switzerland, like I said, there's not a lot of Jamaicans there. I mean, yeah. um, so that's even worse it's for me going around speaking mm -hmm. um, Patwa. Um, um, there's about 250 Jamaicans mm -hmm. there. I've had the opportunity to meet one. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't been in touch in years, so mm -hmm. um, that's yeah. just pretty much it. The only Jamaicans I speak to is people in my household. <laughs> and you guys. <laughs> Majority of my subscribers are Jamaicans yeah. and Caribbean people, so big up yourself. And that's pretty much it, people. Let me know what you think of this yeah. vlog. Let me know if you have any personal experience or opinion of Black Americans that you would like to share, and leave it in the comment below. You I know, hope you enjoyed my presence. <laughs> if you didn't enjoy your presence, well, obviously I did. You see, I can't stop grinning. I'm usually smiling always, anyway. But you know, I smile a lot because that's naturally my personality. But I also smile to extend it kind of like infect mm. you guys to make a exactly. bad situation feel good <laughs> if you're having a bad situation yeah. and if you're having a good situation makes Even it better. feel better <laughs> so on this channel you know guys do not be afraid to contest our opinion especially if you're black American in this particular vlog <laughs> don't be afraid to contest what I said about you guys, um, challenge it, leave a comment because on this channel I accept agreement and I accept disagreement. I accept thumbs up and thumbs down because at the end of the day, people, each one teach one. Each one teach one. <laughs>